men don't bond over sex or over physical connection over physical touch they bond over emotional connection a man will really really bond with us when they feel emotionally connected with us when they really really see us as a woman that they cannot live without because the way they feel and the life that they are imagining with us it's a life that they cannot walk away for women on the other hand we bond over sex and it has a biological reason that I, if you want me i can get into it or not if- welcome to the asian dating podcast i'm your host may bugenhagen i am the owner of two asian matchmakers it's a boutique matchmaking company that started in los angeles in 2009 and today i help men all across the u.s meet asian women all across the u.s and in asia so if you're looking to hire a matchmaker and you want to meet lovely asian women please contact me at two asianmatchmakers.com. And today I have Natalia Marora. She is a global dating and relationship coach. She is passionate about helping women to find and keep true love in a fun, empowering manner. You can find all of her information in the show notes. And I just want to welcome Natalia to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, May, for having me. And Good, good. So tell the audience a little bit about how you got started and how did you end up in this dating industry? So my story started when I was in my early 30s and I went through a breakup, a very, very bad breakup. And uh, I decided in that moment that my history in romantic relationships wasn't that good that I wasn't doing that well in that area. I was very successful in business, in life, with friends, with fitness, with my intellect. Everything was outside on paper. Everything was great. But my romantic relationships sucked. I was really, really bad at them. So when that happened, I decided to do something about it. I decided that enough is enough and that I wanted to build a healthy, mature, extraordinary relationship with a man. And I knew that that had to start with me. Uh, so I went ahead and did. Um, I took some time off dating. I took about a year off. And I did a lot of work on myself. I hired coaches. I read a lot of books. And I started to investigate what was going on with myself, with my mindset, what were my wounds, my childhood wounds. And I started to heal little by little. That led me to go on a two-year dating spree where I dated 200 guys in two years. And that was amazing because it gave me a very, very good first hand, um, kind of like a school of dating because I was learning on the go during, during practice, taking action. I was learning about myself. I was learning how did I feel good with a man and how I didn't feel good with a man. And also I learned a lot about men, how they are, how they are different, how they are similar. And so it was an amazing experience. I have to say that the guys were unbelievable. Uh, It's just, you know, I was still learning and there was always something missing. And for me, most of the time was the chemistry. It was really hard for me to connect at that level with these men. So uh, after that, I moved cities. And as soon as I moved to where I live now in Las Vegas, Nevada area, I met my now husband. We have been together for over 14 years. And um, I, when I met him, I knew. I knew that he was somebody that I wanted to get to know more. I knew he was somebody that it wasn't going to be just one day. It wasn't going to be just something random. And the rest is history. Um, you know, I we are still together. And a few years ago... I decided to combine all my experience and knowledge in the area of psychology, coaching, and philosophy, Western philosophy, Eastern philosophy, and create um, a coaching practice where I help women 
to shift from being disempowered in the area of love to being empowered and taking radical responsibility for who they are and learning how to love themselves fully and how to accept themselves fully. And that's what I do now. I have been doing these things for a few years now and I love it. I love it. I think your story is excellent. I think that we are the best coaches when we are trying to teach others what we've learned, right? And what we learned all these years. And it sounds like you pulled from all these different resources and then you created your own program or your own system. I mean, that's invaluable. Like all these years or all the money you've invested to make yourself better because you knew, okay, you know what? I'm the common denominator with all these bad dates or bad relationships. What can I do? Like you just probably woke up and decided, you know what? I, I feel like I need to do this for myself and I deserve it. So that's awesome. That's, I wish everybody was like that, right? Like if everybody can just look in the mirror and be like, okay, what, what am I doing wrong? What can I do better? Instead of projecting the blame on other people, like, oh, all the men suck, all the women are bad, they're just gold diggers, or they just want something from me. Like, if we can just look within ourselves, I feel like we probably can solve a lot of these um, issues. What do you think? Right. I, I think you are right. It's, it's just the way, you know, it goes. There is only one thing we can control, and it's ourselves. And that even that is really, really hard. I always tell my clients that, you know, imagine you are paying me good money. You are putting all this effort in it. You want to shift. You want to transform. You are willing to put the work and how hard it is to break those patterns. Imagine trying to change somebody that doesn't want to change, that is not invested, that is just fine as they are. It's it's impossible. So I truly believe uh, that everything starts with us and we really, really have to fall in love unapologetically with ourselves and have that desire of, of getting better, not from a place of there is something wrong with me, but from a place of what is missing. There is something missing here. You know, I like to use the example of the Williams sisters, Vanessa Williams and Serena Williams, that when they when they play a match of tennis, even if they win it, even if they're the champions of the world, they go back home and they look at those videos of their playing. And they are not looking for what is wrong. I think LeBron James used to do the same thing. These high, high performing athletes, extraordinary people, they are not looking for what is wrong. They are looking for what is the missing thing that if I add it, it will make the whole difference and it will take my love life to the next level. And that is what I did. That is what I did. I I did, I looked at, I look at that and I was like, what is the missing part in myself, in my game? that is missing, that if I add it, if I can grow into it, if I can evolve into and become that, I can start having more successful relationships. And that is what I did. So what was the most important thing you did to shift your love life from sad and resigned about love to empowered and now happily married? Like what was that one thing you did to really overcome your previous uh, love relationship outlook? That's a great question. The first thing, the first, first, first thing that I did was to come to terms that my life was, that I was giving meaning to the events that were happening to me that the events that were happening to me in life, they didn't come with an inherent meaning. I was giving a meaning to those events based on my past, based on, my, on the software that was installed on my brain from years and years and years of being alive. 
You know, that was the first thing, realizing that there was one Natalia that was pure possibility, was a clean slate, and she could have anything she wanted in this area of love and relationships. And there was another Natalia that had a software, had a chip implanted that was telling her that relationships were this way, men were this way, that my place in, in my love life was this place, that that was telling me what was possible and not possible for me. And it was very limiting. It was very, very limiting. So once I let go of that and I was like, okay, the world is my oyster. If I can dream as big as I want in this area of love and relationship, what would I create? So I started from that place of possibility of what is possible for me. If my past weren't there, if all the things that I have been through in my life wasn't there, if the model, the map that my primary caregivers gave me as how to love, because we learn how to love from our primary caregivers. They give us a map. And if our primary caregivers are not healthy and they showed us that neglect is love, they show us that abuse is love, they show us that, you know, not being taken into a consideration is love, we are going to grow up and those are the kind of relationships we are going to look because that's what we made love mean. Even when it hurts because we can feel the pain, it doesn't matter unless we bring it to the table and say, okay, this is my love map. I want to go to China, but the love map that I got was leading me to Tucson and there is no way I can go to China if I can keep using this love map. So that is something that I had to restructure was my story regarding what love is. I actually, when I was about 29 years old, I believe, I Googled what is love because I really, really didn't know what love was. If you ask me at that time, what is love? I don't know. So I started from scratch to build a new territory, a new map that was going to lead me where I wanted to go. And that took a lot of work. The first thing was to realize that, that I was following a map that was leading me to the wrong place. And I was always trying to get to where I wanted to go, going to a different place. So I needed to align on that. And then from there, you know, I kept going. So you work with a lot of women. You said um, off camera, we talked about the age range. You work with women, let's say in their 20s, all the way to the 70s, right? But your specialty is the millennials from 30 to 45-ish. Yes. Um, what do you think is the one mistake most women make when they meet the right man for them? I think there are, there are a few things. I believe the main, main mistake that uh, women make is that they, they don't take their time to let the relationship unfold. They confuse the feeling that they have, that feeling that they have that is the right guy with being real, with him being the right guy. He, that feeling it's, it's exactly what happened to me. I met my, my now husband and I knew he was the one. But that was my body telling me that he was the right one. It wasn't really real evidence in the world that was based on him showing me over time that he had the character that I was putting on him immediately because he was hot, because he was hot. I made it mean that he had impeccable character, that his morals were great, that we had the same vision in life, that we were on the same page, that, you know, all that in five seconds. And that is the main mistake. 
that we do that. We, we jump into an instant relationship instead of saying, okay, this great feeling I'm having with this guy, it's awesome. It's a yes. It's a yes to say yes to another day. And it's a yes to say yes to another day. And keep seeing if when I am with that guy, I feel amplified. If I keep thinking he's an extraordinary man, when he goes to, to the supermarket and he has to wait in line for 10 minutes to get his groceries ringed, you know, is he still keeping his cool? When he goes to, you know, when he runs into an old lady, that he helps her with the bags or, or to cross the street, or if he sees um, a, a puppy lost, is, does he have compassion? Different thing, whatever is important to us, those things are only going to be shown over time. And that's the main thing that I see. They jump in what I call an immediate relationship. Instead of seeing those good feelings as a sign of keep saying yes, keep saying yes. And I believe a healthy relationship is pretty much built on a succession of yes. You know, so you say yes to a date, then you say yes to another date, then you say yes to being exclusive, then you say yes to getting engaged, then you say yes to agree to meet at the church if that's your thing and get married. You say yes to have kids. You, it's yes after yes after yes. But when they jump too soon into a relationship, um, they are cheating themselves of having this opportunity to really see, experience this guy as a human being in an, its entirety. So your best advice for women is don't confuse the chemistry with being in a relationship right away. It's almost like the chemistry is great. The feelings you get from being attracted to this man is great but don't neglect getting to know him. And it's okay to slow things down and right. peel, um, peel the layers, I guess, if you will. Um, so when you say slow it down, what do you mean by that? Like, when do you kiss? When do you have a stay over? When do you make out? When do you, do you know what I mean? When do you be exclusive? Like, do you have advice for women in that next level? Well, I do and I don't, because that is very personal. I don't believe really uh, that, um, I don't, I believe the skills and the when to do something and how to do it is important, but I believe it's the second important part. The first important part is the mindset. So it depends. If, if you know yourself, and you know that you are kissing him or having sex right away because you are afraid that if you don't do that, he's going to walk away. That is a big sign to say no. So it depends. It has a lot to do with the intention. If you are a woman that are super, super, you know, um, you know yourself and you are super self-sufficient and you know that you are not going to get confused when getting physical with him you can go ahead and, and get physical whenever you want as long as you do it as a way to get physical and to have fun but when we do it to try to get closer to him and try to close him that is when things get tricky because men don't see sex as a way to bond. And it's not that they don't see it. It's the way men are. Men don't bond over sex or over physical uh, connection, over physical touch. They bond over emotional touch, a, a connection. A man will really, really bond with us when they feel emotionally connected with us. When they really, really see us as a woman, that they cannot live without us because the way they feel and the life that they are imagining with us, it's a life that they cannot walk away. So for women, on the other hand, we bond over sex and it has a biological reason that 
I, if you want me, I can get into it or not. It's, it's a biological reason. We are supposed to be having babies and we know our primal brain knows that we have more chances of bringing our children up successfully if we have a partner that supports us. So we do bond over sex. So th those are the two main things that women have to know is the intention. If they want to do it because they want to have fun and they know they can handle it, do it. Now, I'm going to say this. I haven't met one woman that can do that yet. Okay. I have met a ton of women that are like, no, it's my toy boy. I'm just having sex with him. And then they come crying to me because they're like, he didn't text me for my birthday. And I'm like, well, he didn't have to because you're just having sex. So I haven't met yet one woman that can get physical with a man for a few times and don't get emotionally involved. So the when, the how, it's when you really, really feel like you trust the guy and that you can rely on the guy. So you first you get to know the guy and you get to see who he is. You get to see who, if you like who he is on the surface level and the everyday things. And then you need to build that trust. And trust is something that number one starts with us, with knowing that we can trust ourselves, that whatever life throws at us, we are gonna be able to adapt and, and, and survive and thrive. So it has that first component. And then it has the second component is that you trust the guy in the measure that he gains your trust. Once you trust him, so then you get to rely on him. You go on a trip and you say, hey, Sam, can you water my plants? I am going out of town for two days. Can you water my plants? And then you come back and your plants are dead. So he's not very reliable, you see? So you rely on him. You are like, hey, can you go pick me up at the airport? He shows up. Good, that's evidence. You know, you say, hey, you know, I, I, my car broke down. Can you come pick me up? He shows up, right? You rely on him. You know, now you know him, you trust him, you rely on him. And then usually, I am a little bit old, old school on this, old school and not. I always said the first sexual encounter, it's kind of like a freebie. Because then we are encountered with two choices. We either commit to be exclusive to that guy because we know him, we trust him, we rely on him, we like him, we feel connected and all that. And we commit to the guy to be exclusive and then we get intimate. But I don't personally recommend that. And the reason why is because there are times where we don't like them in that way. We have sex with them and it's a big full body, no, no. I don't know if you have ever been there, but it's like a, no, I don't want this guy touching me again. So what I suggest for the women that are open to this, which are not many, is just have sex with him as a freebie and see if you like him that way. And if you like him that way, then commit and keep going. So you're saying and don't make a commitment to be exclusive until after you're sure after you have sex. I, I, I suggest that. Okay. I suggest that because there is one too many times I see with my clients that they the guy is amazing. He has he's extraordinary. Let's leave it at that. And um, but then in the area of intimacy, they don't connect. Okay. Got it. Got it. Now being that your specialty is with women 30 to 45. What other uh, tips can you give the women out there who are very successful? They are maybe type A, they are very confident. 
what kind of guy should they be looking for, the women who have it all? There are a few things that I believe are good markers, good cues. But again, it depends on the person because we all value different things. So I would say first, do, do your the inner work and figure it out what are your values in the area of romantic relationships and family and leaving legacy as a family. Because that is very different than whatever else you may value on other aspects of your life. Business, health, you know. So first get really clear on, on what you value and that is going to be your North Star. That is going to be your North Star because let me give you an example. If you are a woman that is very successful, like most of our clients are like that, let's be honest, very successful. My clients on top of that are gorgeous. I don't know why. I, I attract these women that are absolutely beautiful and um and they have their their homeowners you know they have they have a lot going on for themselves and uh most of them are family oriented so they they really really value their brothers their sisters their nieces their nephews their friends their parents they value holidays together they value going to baptize or bar mitzvahs or, you know, whatever holiday is important for them, tradition. So if that is you, to give you as an example, and you meet a guy that he's giving you cues early on, that he doesn't value that, that he's not into that, that he doesn't really care about family time, that he really cares about you but he doesn't want to go to all those um, holidays with you and, and enjoy that family time. You may need to rethink that. Is that gonna be a problem? Or is that something that I'll be okay with it? You know, going to those holidays by myself. That's something that varies woman by woman, but th that's the kind of thinking that you have to have is what is really important to me is family time. It's financial security. It's uh, living, you know, a frugal lifestyle or living a more luxurious lifestyle. Because if you meet a guy that is extraordinary, but he's frugal, and uh, I like getting my hair done every four weeks and getting my nail done every two weeks and getting Botox and Juvederm and designer bags and Louis Vuitton shoes, there, there may be a clash there. And uh, so those are the things. That, that is more at the level of values in general. What values I have and what values he has. And do we agree on those? Being on the same page. Because if, if you are, my clients are young and they want to have kids. That's why they hire me usually. They they want to have kids. They are in their 30s, their late 20s, and, and they are ready to get a family. So if they want to have kids by age 30, and he's 34, and he wants to have kids by age 40, there is going to be a, a problem there. So first, being very practical in that level, that having values that are aligned. Once that is um, kind of figured out, and that you can only know over time. You can only know that over time. It's not something that happens in one week, two weeks. So, and then the other thing, it's about him. What kind of human he is. And this was really, really important in my own journey. What kind of human he is. Is he about something else than himself? Let's say he's very successful and he has, he's a CEO, his own six figure, seven figures company. But is he making all that money and mistreating his employees? Is, is he just about the money? Or is he about, you know, doing some pro bono? Is he being a, a, a big brother to somebody, a mentor to somebody? So 
make sure that he has some, I think that is very important, knowing that he's some he's about something bigger than himself. The other thing that I find really important is, is he into the dynamics between men and women? Because we are very similar, but we are very different as well. And if he's not into learning, if he's not a little bit curious about how women are and how men are and how we melt and how we fit, it's just going to be really, if everything is going to be an uphill battle because it's going to be his way or the highway. So these are some of the things that I, I would think are very important. They have a lot to do with character. And we cannot know the character of a man unless we have been with him for a certain length of time, not shorter than three months, I believe, where he showed us over time because they can fake it. They can tell us exactly what we want to hear in order to get us. Yeah, I agree. Natalia, that is great information. And I, I agree, 90 days or three months is a good time to really figure out who that person is. I mean, even when we apply for a new job and we get the new job, we're still on 90 day probation with our health right. insurance before we can even use it. So 90 days is not very long, but you're right. I mean, we can really figure out who that person is over time and there are people who can fake it. You can they fake are. being a good person for a long period of time. So it's um, it's interesting. Thank you so much for being on my show today, Natalia. I will put all of your contact information in the show notes. And for you guys out there, if you're looking to hire a matchmaker or just speak with me, I would love to speak with you and just tell you a little bit about what I do and learn a little bit about you. So see if I can help you. Please go to twoasianmatchmakers.com. And Natalia, thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you guys all later. Bye. Bye.